Hello, my name is Adeline Frew, Director of Appointments and Communications for NIJAC. I am pleased to introduce this video to accompany the launch of a combined scheme for members of the Victims Payment Board and the Review Tribunal. NIJAC is seeking to appoint 12 medical members to the Victims Payment Board and six members to the Review Tribunal. Applicants will have the opportunity to apply for one or both of the judicial offices by submitting one expression of interest form and attending one interview in respect of both roles. The scheme opens for expressions of interest on Thursday 25th of May and closes to applications at 12 noon on Thursday 15th of June. I am pleased to introduce Dr Ian Ryans, who serves as a medical member on both the Victims Payment Board and the Review Tribunal. Dr Ryans, thank you for joining me today and agreeing to answer some questions. That's no problem, glad to. If I may start, um, please uh, tell us uh, a little about your background as a medical professional. Thanks, Adeline. Yeah, I uh, have worked as a GP throughout my professional career and I was a partner in Cag Fergus for 10 years and then more recently for about 14 years in Dundonald. Um, I retired from GP clinical work about two years ago, but I continue with uh, the various judicial rules, rules that um, I have. I suppose my career although not known as a portfolio career at the beginning, has it's typical of that portfolio career um, set up. I worked in rheumatology and the hospital sector, got involved in primary care, musculoskeletal re research, and then later on got involved with the federations and developing musculoskeletal care and education uh, with GPs. So it's been that varied and um, multifaceted career. Um, and I can, throughout that period, I've been involved with different judicial rules within various tribunals to various degrees throughout my career. And, and how long have you served as a medical member? Well, in terms of, in general, generally speaking, I started in the Appeals Tribunal way back in 1994. Uh, so it's coming up in 30 years. So that's... Uh, a long time but uh, in terms of the other tribunals I've been in the criminal injuries tribunal for about 10 years and then more recently in 2020 I joined the review tribunal whenever the medical or Men mental capacity act was introduced and also when the victims payment um, scheme uh, got up and running I was appointed to the victims payment for just about uh, just over a year ago yeah. And, and can you tell me something about, uh, can you give an overview of the work of the Victims Payment Board and the Review Tribunal work? Sure, no problem. Um, firstly, with the Review Tribunal, the, um, the role of a generalist medical member uh, is to sit on three person panels uh, to review deprivations of liberty under the Mental Capacity Act. And that involves I mean, two main groups of people. Um, firstly, people who have dementia and who are detained in care homes it makes up a, a large part of that workload. And all, the second largest group would be people with learning disabilities um, who are in similar types of uh, situations where they're not free to leave and they're, or they're under constant supervision or control. So that would make up maybe 99% of the cases that we would see. Um, uh, the decisions um, that are made by the, the, the panels relate to ensuring that the trust have shown that there is appropriate care and treatment available for the people and that uh, there is significant risk to the person if they're not detained in that way and that they lack the lack of capacity to make a decision for themselves has been established. Uh, so uh, as a panel member, as a medical generalist panel member, you're presented with the various forms and assessments that have been used as evidence by the trust ahead of the hearing date. And the largest part of that work uh, is probably in the preparation for the, for the hearings in the reading the papers, preparing and, and, and being ready for the, the, the hearing. Uh, the vast majority of the Mental Capacity Act cases are carried out remotely on, on the basis of the papers alone. Uh, with the three members meeting usually by WebEx 
uh, with a legal member, a medical member and an experienced member. And then after sitting and making uh, a determination as a panel, the legal member will write up the decision and the other members will have an opportunity to comment on that uh, and make suggestions on it before it's issued. Uh, occasionally there'll be oral hearings um, where parties either face-to-face -face or remotely will attend, um, but the majority don't involve the, the person who's deprived of their liberty. Occasionally the medical members asked to examine a patient. It's a very rare occurrence, but occasionally you may be asked to examine and report back to the tribunal on your findings uh, of that patient. And I hope that summarizes broadly what to expect in the review tribunal. In terms of the victim's payment board, um, the rule is a little different um, in that not only are you part of decision-making panels, you're actually a member of the scheme board. So you have an involvement in the overall running of the scheme. And you also have the opportunity to get involved in subcommittees and committees of the board, looking, for example, at governance or other aspects of the function of the board. So that's a, a different aspect to the rule um, that isn't in the other uh, review tribunal rule. However, um, the main rule, if you like, is a decision-making rule. And again, that involves sitting in three-person panels with a legal and an experienced member. And uh, the panels can either be initial decision-making panels uh, on eligibility or payments that have been um, looked at by an independent medical healthcare professional, or they can be appeal panels where uh, uh, someone is bringing appeal against a decision that's previously been made. And similar to the um, review tribunal, the papers are made available ahead of time. And that might include uh, the application form, any evidence that's been gathered, and the medical evidence relating to the permanent disability that's been claimed. So again, ahead of time, you the majority of the work is around preparing, reading, and looking through that evidence. And then again, the uh, most of the hearings occur remotely and uh, involve just the panel discussing the paper evidence. Within the appeals to the original decisions, there's more often face-to-face uh, -face hearings in that situation where you may be uh, taking evidence from the appellant. Um, so the work's varied and interesting and challenging at times. Um, particularly dealing with victims of the Troubles who have often suffered significant injury and trauma. So I hope that gives you a, a flavour of the two different roles. It certainly does. Uh, thank you. And uh, within your experience, um, the benefits, the rewards, uh, what do you get out of doing the work? Yeah, um, I, I find working as in, in these judicial roles both in the review tribunal and the victims payment board very rewarding. I think some of the those areas would be the variety and job satisfaction that you get from the rule. And um, you gain a varied experience in the working week. Uh, it breaks up your working week into different aspects and it's very different from the medical rule as a GP um, or, or other medical professional. And the rules complement each other very well, I think enhance each other. So I think there's an enhancement to your, your work as a GP uh, by getting involved in this type of role. Um, there's also a flexibility to it, which allows you to fit the two roles together um, and uh, change as your career changes and develops. Um, I think as well, there are transferable skills. Um, you definitely bring your medical skills that you've developed from your medical career into the role as a panel member, but also I think you bring skills that you learn as a panel member uh, into your role as a medical practitioner um, and uh, analyzing documents, for example, or learning to weigh evidence, assessing credibility of witnesses um, and using evidence to make just and fair decisions. I think all those skills are, are, are transferable into your other work areas. I think the other aspect for me is working collaboratively with a wide range of people from different backgrounds, working with lawyers and other professionals um, who have a different you know, perspective on how to do uh, certain rules. And I think it really widens your experience and different approaches to problem solving, et cetera. Not least, uh, I think it, makes 
a valuable contribution to society. I think as a member of any of the panels, um, uh, you're contributing to a, a fair and just decision-making process in society. And particularly in the Victims Payment Board, um, it, that has been set up as a, as a way to try to acknowledge the harm that we've suffered as a society and the troubles and, the, and try to redress to some extent the suffering that people have had in that. And everyone in our society has lived through the troubles either growing up through them or living through the impact of the troubles after their ending. And I think hearing the stories of those who've been suffering through permanent disablement is very challenging, yet enhances your understanding of how society is functioning and also is transferable into your day-to-day -day role as you care for patients. So those are some of the main things that I found uh, um, helpful in the role. Many and varied, yeah, thank you. Yes, and, absolutely. Um, Finally, do you have any uh, advice for those considering uh, to apply for one or both roles? Absolutely. I think uh, it's a real opportunity. And I think uh, no matter what stage of your career you're in, I think it's a it's an opportunity um, in the early stages, the middle stages, and the late stages of your career and the benefits I've already summarised. I think do some research into the rules and um, talk to somebody who is maybe already performing a similar role. Um, I'm happy to chat to anyone who, who wants to get more information. Um, it's also worth maybe going to the DPB website and the DOJ website, where you'll see further information about how the board works and how the review tribunal functions. I think that would be a helpful place to find a little bit more about it. There's obviously a, do a job description on the NIJAC website that you can look at and really look at if it appeals to you, I'd say apply for it and go for it. And I think it would be a really worthwhile role for you to be involved in. Dr. Ryan, thank you um, so much for your time and really helpful um, information. Um, I, I'm going to conclude uh, by giving um, some further information about the scheme. Uh, to be eligible for appointment uh, as a medical member of the Victims Payment Board or the Re Review Tribunal, a person must be a registered medical practitioner with the General Medical Council. The selection process will involve completing an expression of interest form and assuming you're eligible, an interview via Zoom. And a reminder that you have the opportunity to apply for one or both roles by submitting one expression of interest and attending one interview. For further information, as well as those to which Dr. Ryan's has signed posted, uh, please look at the NIJAC website, which is www.nijac.gov.uk uh, for further information on the applicant information booklet, job description, et cetera, and other helpful information. The scheme closes at 12 noon on Thursday, 15th of June. Thank you for watching this video and uh, all the very best with your application.